Today's Spontanea Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Andy Daly is back with an all-new season of Review on Comedy Central. Andy's character Forrest McNeil reviewed some unusual things last year, like road rage and eating 45 pancakes. Now he's reviewing more normal stuff, like being buried alive. Forrest McNeil, reviewing life even if it kills him. Review, Thursdays at 10, 9 Central and also on the Comedy Central app. Welcome Welcome, my friends. Welcome to this thing called Spontanea Nation. What kind of thing is it? What kind of thing has it been today? That's a reference to Aaron Sorkin. His many shows, he always names one episode. What kind of day has it been? (laughs) He likes to repeat stuff. Hey, who doesn't? Who doesn't like to say a thing they've said before (laughs) guys I want you to take a moment to realize how satisfying that is because here's why you've mastered something if you let's say you say a word like fire truck now I've said that word before let me tell you something it felt great to know I still got it fire truck fire truck fire truck I'll say it all the live long day why isn't that in the, in the song? I've been saying the word fire truck all the live long day. I have a mental illness. It's the only word I say, except for this song. Wouldn't that be wonderful to see somebody doing that in concert? <laughs> That's a trick question. I know that would not be wonderful. It would be scary. Now, if you're like me, you can't hear yourself in the headphones at all. (laughs) Are you like me? Well, there's only one me. Another trick question. Oh, I don't know how I got turned all the way down by myself. That was weird. Life throws you curveballs, guys. That's why you got to make curveball aid. Hey, have you ever gotten a bunch of used baseballs, put them in a big pitcher, let them soak overnight in some water, and then drank it? No? Uh, Me neither. Uh, I've certainly never done that. That sounds weird. (laughs) Guys, I'm happy you're listening to this. Now, that's a leap of faith. There might be no one listening to this. I hope that there is. I hope there's... I know there's going to come, look, I'm realistic. I know there's going to come a time when I have one listener. (laughs) We're recording this way in advance. Is this that time? I hope one listener, if one listener you be, that you are enjoying this and enjoying Evan playing some down and dirty blues over there. (laughs) And if you are my one listener, I hope that we get to meet someday. Not on earth, but in the kingdom of heaven. (laughs) Here's why I hope that. Because that would mean that heaven is real. Which I've been thinking for a while, it's not. (laughs) But, But I'm not one of these, look, I'm not an atheist, one of these atheists that, like, I'd be disappointed if there was a God in a heaven. I, I think I'd get on board, guys. I think it'd be like, I've never been happier to be wrong. Do you think that would keep me from being condemned to hell? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope God would not be holding a grudge. If you, if you find yourself standing before a supreme being saying, look, I'm big enough to admit I was wrong. That's got to be enough. That's got to be enough. And if it's not, guess what? I may not be a supreme being, but I'm a superior one because I can let stuff go. I'm not going to... 
if I'm confronted with a God, I'm not going to try to talk him out of his own existence. Like, nah, you're impossible. That's rude. My mama raised me right. Well, she also raised me Catholic, but that did not take. Did not last. But I like to think my mother raised me to be polite enough to not try to disprove the existence of God to God. <laughs> Enough said. Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comic book nerds, welcome <laughs> to Spontanea Nation. I am Paul F. Tompkins. Over there, <laughs> that's right, comic book nerds, neither ladies nor gentlemen. <laughs> I am Paul F. Tompkins. I am your host. Over there is Eben Schletter. He is playing the piano. Pianoforte. Si. Bravo. Bravo, amigo mío. Pianoforte. Excelente. I have a guest that I'm going to talk to. Now, that's not a surprise because I do that every show until the show that it inevitably happens where someone just doesn't show up. It's bound to happen. Law of averages. Today is not that day, my friends. Today I have a guest. This gentleman is an amazing singer, songwriter, and singer-songwriter. <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce... A, a rare Los Angeles appearance. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan Colton. Hello, Paul. Ooh, ooh, applause. Yeah. Applause for me on scenes. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having Thrilled me. Thrilled to have you on the show. I'm glad I started doing the show in time to have you on it. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you know that I don't know? Oh. Uh, Am I about to die? That's for another time. Okay. I'm forbidden to interfere. That's fine. <laughs> Jonathan, I have a question for you from our previous guest. He asks, he or she, it's a he. Guys, I'll give you that much. What ridiculous formality do you slavishly observe? What ridiculous formality do I slavishly observe? Is there a thing that you know, uh, That's this is like an archaic manners thing or whatever, and nobody needs to do this anymore. No one would fault me if I didn't do it, but yet you feel like you must still do it. Um, I'm not sure I'm a slave to a lot of... Uh, Formalities. Do I seem like a particularly formal guy? No, look, know. hey, I'm not the one asking the question. No, although you're not. I just did ask the you question. Did. Technically, you are the one asking the question. <laughs> uh, I merely think of me as like a, a big minor bird. And this is, this is the, the words that I've learned. Yeah. And I'm just repeating them. I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> That's, fine. That's how I think of you anyway. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think the only thing I can really think of is, is that I still say when, I, when my phone rings and it says, my wife's name mm -hmm. on it. I pick it up and I say, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Even though you know, I know who exactly it is. who it I is. I know who's calling. I could say, hi, Christine. Or, or it's Christine. I could say anything. Right. Uh, but I say, hello? <laughs> so like, and then I wait Christine. for her. It's Christine. I like that a lot. It's Christine. It's Christine. That would be very confusing. <laughs> But I, but I say hello like a question, and then I wait for her to explain herself. <laughs> I do that with every phone call, as we have for generations. Does there's she, no need to do it anymore. Does she then say, it's Christine? Does she <laughs> identify herself, or does hi, she just start talking? Hi, it's Christine, your wife. <laughs> <laughs> hi, this is Christine from Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she just says hi. Right. She just says hi, and then we begin our conversation. I mean, we're not, you know. We're not super formal on the telephone. <laughs> but there is that little tiny bit of formality that doesn't really make any sense. Hello? When did we decide that the hello should be a question as opposed to a statement? I don't know. I don't Does know. it make way more sense <laughs> than you would pick up the phone and say hello? Right, right. But I guess that's weird. There's it's, something that's weird about that. It's aggressive. Right? It it's doesn't too feel aggressive. Right. Hello. <laughs> it's, aggr <laughs> it's too much. Hello. You want to want to have a sort of open feeling when you've been in a conversation. Hello. Absolutely. What do you got? <laughs> and you know, sometimes when you ever get this, when somebody you get a you get a wrong number, mm -hmm. and this is how the conversation goes. You pick up the phone. Hello. And there's some silence because they're confused. Right. And they go, hello. <laughs> And you say, hello, 
because you're like, it's not on me. Yeah. I'm not the one who has to explain what's happening. I get to do the hello. Right. I just asked you a question. You don't do hello question to me. You don't ask me that question. Yeah. Yeah. I like when people will, they will not let go of the idea that they've called the right number. <laughs> and it's like, I am, I swear to you, I'm not the person you're looking for and I'm not hiding them anywhere or covering for them. This is the wrong number. No, pretty sure you are Margaret. I am pretty sure you're Margaret. <laughs> okay, put Margaret on. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> were manners a big deal when you were a kid? Was it something that you were that you remember kind of being drummed into you? I had uh, my, uh, my my parents were uh, sort of standard on manners. It wasn't particularly <laughs> a, a strong set of rules. Uh, but my grandparents, uh, uh, my dad's my dad's parents were really particular about some things that I was not. <laughs> you know, when I was six years old, they were amazed that I did not know to stand up when a lady entered the room. Right. <laughs> Which is a lot to ask of a six-year-old. Yeah. You can't even really get a six-year-old to wipe his butt on a regular but, basis. But do children have to stand up when a lady enters the room? I, 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 I thought that was for, like, grown people. Yeah, maybe I wasn't six. Maybe I was ten. Teenager? Ten? I, no, I was, it was younger than that. Wow. It was young enough that I was like, I have never even heard of the idea that you would stand up when a lady enters the room. Yeah. What is a lady? <laughs> Am I a lady? Am I a lady? Who knows? Does it get better? <laughs> <laughs> and they, so they had a very, they were really crazed about please and thank you in a way that clearly my parents were not because they, <laughs> they would say, would you like a cookie? And I would say, yes. And they would say, yes, what? And I wouldn't know what they were talking about. Yes, I would like a cookie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> What, what part? What part of the sentence? Yes, do you not understand, Grandma? You are you offering me a cookie or not? <laughs> right. Uh, what, what are we doing here? What did you call your grandparents? <laughs> uh, my my. <laughs> so my father's my father's parents long line of waspy grandparent nicknames. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandparents were known to the grandchildren as Mum and Baba. Baba. Uh, but the the children all refer to them as Tuffy and BJ. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Uh -oh. My grandmother, my grandmother was named was named Anne, uh -huh. and she was known as Tuffy. Tuffy, because she was T O U G H Y. A, she was a Tuffy. Wow. And uh, BJ, <laughs> that was that was John. His name was John, and he was called BJ. Now, it, can can you reveal the source of his nickname, or is it? <laughs> I, I asked I asked one time why is he called BJ? What is B? It was the initial the initials B and mm -hmm. J, and I was told yeah it stands for Big Jock, <laughs> and I don't I have no idea if that's true. I don't know if there's a story behind it. I don't know if it's because he was into sports or because he had a large jock strap. I don't know what. What did he have any Scottish heritage? No, I don't think so. Wow, I don't think so. So okay, who who called them what? <laughs> so the children, the children called them Tuffy and BJ. The ch their children, their children, right? Their children and their grandchildren, so as opposed to mom and dad. <clears throat> yeah, not mom and dad. Wow. I mean, I think what you know, probably when they were kids, they called them mom and dad, but later on, they called them Tuffy and BJ. And and, and the the grandparents willingly submitted to this. Oh yes, they like loved they didn't it. say, hey, don't call. Come no, on. no, they loved it. They, they reveled. Loved they it. reveled in it. And I think even the grandchildren, when they got older. Would begin to call them Tuffy and BJ instead of because you don't want to you don't want to call them Mum and Baba. It's, it's humiliating once you pass Baba. Baba. Hi, Baba. Now is that a thing that he wanted to be called as the grandfather, or was that a thing that like one of the one of the grandchildren couldn't say? That's that's what I think it was. Is that they they were sort of drunkenly passing around the first grandchild <laughs> one night at a, at the end of a cocktail party. <laughs> and, uh, it was a different time. It was. It was a different time, and they you know, and that was how the that was how the first grandchild pronounced. Grandma and grandpa, right. presumably. I, and my father's grandparents also had ridiculous nicknames. He, so he had one set of grandparents that were called Muma and Umpa. That's like a German thing, right? I think that's kind of a German thing. Yeah. And the other ones were called Ni and Duda. Whoa. <laughs> Ni. Ni. <laughs> I guess the first grandchild wasn't very bright. I don't know. Ni. Ni. Like granny. N-E-E, -E, oh, maybe. Granny, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure the children Me. who named these grandparents knew how they were spelled at the time. So it's right. a bit of a – Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to become a grandfather, which may happen. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. You have two kids. Mm -hmm. They – I mean, 
I don't think they'll probably have kids with each other, but <laughs> I, who okay. can say? No one can see the future. No, it's possible. They might, they might, between them, they might have a bunch of kids. Yeah. Do you have a preferred thing that you would like to be called? Have you already picked that out? Gee, I haven't really thought about uh, what I want to be called as a grandfather because I'm only I'm only forty four. No, for I know. Sake. I know. <laughs> Why are you so I, far? We talked about my <laughs> impending death and my grandfather nickname. I'm not feeling so good about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like a ridiculous. I'm not really into the ridiculous nicknames. Yeah. I would like to be called, you know, Grandpa, mm-hmm. or perhaps Mr. Colton, if it's a, <laughs> if it's the beginning of a conversation, the beginning of an evening. My, once we loosen up, you can call me. Grandpa. <laughs> Absolutely, big jock. <laughs> um, the idea of giving your parents nicknames is that's a new one. On me. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, that's a very strange thing. And it does I, – I really do think it does come from – I mean, I will always remember my grandparents, uh, uh, you know, three sheets to the wind at four in the afternoon <laughs> with glasses of vodka. They were, they were fun. <laughs> they pickled themselves their whole lives. And they were, so, they were so much fun. And they loved nothing more than to have a cocktail and, sure. and uh, have a, a ribald good time with friends. So I'm sure, I'm sure it, was, it was one of those events where somebody was like, you know what you are? You're a toughie. And it stuck, you know. <laughs> I like that they really liked getting hammered, like, as soon as possible. Yep. Sons pass the yard arm and all that. That's right. Um, but also, stickler for manners. Stickler for manners. Please and thank you. Please, please and thank you. Yes, I would like a third cocktail, please. Did you <laughs> Did you have to write notes, thank you notes? Oh, God, so many thank you notes, yeah. I, I had to write a lot of thank you notes. My parents, my parents who were like, I don't care if you write a thank you note, but your grandma and grandpa are going to get really upset if you don't write a thank you note. So you wow. have to write a thank you note. So a lot of forced thank you notes. And I, I feel like the greatest gift that, that I can give to all of the future children <laughs> that I will ever know is that they never have to write me a thank you note. I will send you a gift. You can open it when no one is around. Right. You don't even need to tell me you got it. Throw it in the trash. Throw it in the garbage. I don't give a good goddamn. I I absolve you from your thank you notes. (laughs) That said, uh, when you do receive a thank you note from someone, it is kind of a remarkable, it feels very good. It really does. That person is is an amazing, thoughtful person. Because it is the idea that you are being thought of by someone else mm-hmm. when you are not right in front of their face. That's right. The idea that in, on their own time, <laughs> right. they thought about you. Right. And like looked up your address, made sure they had it correctly and, you mm-hmm. know, all that. It, it really is a wonderful thing. And every, and every time I get a thank you note, I think, this is a nice thing to do and I should do this more I should more do often. this more. And, and do I, you? And do I you sure write? don't do it. No, I know. No. I, know. I don't either. I don't either. And I have stationery and stuff, you know? Like I have nice yeah. note cards You and seem like a like guy that. who would have a pretty good collection of stationery well. and hands and stamps and seals and things. I, I have all that shit. <laughs> I have all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you should get a seal, a ring with a seal on it and with the wax and everything. Do you think I haven't thought about that? I of know. course I have. I bet you have. I of course have. I have. But that's why my the, the grandparent thank you notes that I wrote were forced March thank you notes. Yeah. Which I, even as a child, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. This is not a thoughtful thing for me to do right. because I am literally being forced to do it. Yeah. Why don't you loosen up? Let me not do it for a while. <laughs> and then the one time I do it, it'll be a true gift. <laughs> now, do you remember the last time you wrote a thank you note? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Email? Sure, email. Email is very happen. easy to do. It's very easy to do, but I feel like that is not that is not nearly the same thing as a handwritten thank you note. No, it is not. That's true. Um, you don't I, get the same feeling. I write thank you notes to uh, to performers who uh, who appear on my uh, my events. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, for gifts, no, I don't. I don't send any uh, send any thank you notes for mm-hmm. gifts. I'm a monster. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was raised by my parents and not my grandparents. If I was raised by my grandparents, I might be a more polite person. Do you have any nicknames for your parents? Or are they just mom and dad? <laughs> just just, mom and, just dad. mom and dad. No, I don't they don't seem like the nickname types. Do you uh, did you ever call them by their first names? No, I think that's really weird. It let me tell you something. My mother, out of nowhere one day, decided after we were all adults, said, <laughs> I've decided you can call me Jenny. <laughs> it was like it's not like a thing we were dying to do. And we're like, uh, okay, but goddamn, if we didn't start calling her Jenny, you did, yeah, we did. And it felt sometimes we'd say mom, sometimes we'd say Jenny, and then it was weird how natural it felt. Did it? 
do you think it changed any aspect of your relationship? Did it change the way you thought about her once you started yeah, calling I, her Jenny? I, I think she became more of a person to us. Oh, that's I can't, not, that's I can't not speak right. for all my brothers and sisters, but it, here's what it, you know what it was. It didn't necessarily make her seem different to us. It made us seem different to ourselves. Right. That we felt more like we felt more like adults in her presence than just her children. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that when we would have a conversation about something, it felt more like we are two. I'm allowed to say what I want because I'm a grown up too. You yeah, know, and right. and so I can disagree with her on this, and you know, whatever. And that thing, that thing happens where you where you you become adult an adult, but you're still stuck in the patterns yeah. of of whatever relationship you've had with this person, Absolutely. and it's hard to. But, it, it is sometimes hard to think of yourselves as too, you know. But usually. you're only you're only stuck in those patterns forever. Well, that's right. It's only <laughs> yeah. until you die. Yeah. So it's exactly fine. exactly. Yeah, it continues after they die. It's really it's until still, you die. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, death. <laughs> I'm glad we fit so much of it in. Uh, Jonathan Colton, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We are now in uh, the the dog days of summer. <laughs> Is there <laughs> anything that you would like to tell the people about? Uh, I'm taking the summer off, man. Good I'm, for you. I'm relaxing. Good for you. Um, my album is probably done now. I bet it is. I don't know if it's out yet. Probably not. I don't think so. It's coming soon, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I will plug uh, I will plug uh, my annual fan cruise called the Joko Cruise. That's right, uh, which is happening uh, this February. If you don't uh, know what that, folks, if you don't know what that is, let me tell you, it ain't nothing but a good time. <laughs> it's. I have done it in the past, and I'm doing it again. You are doing it this year, yeah. This year, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm excited to have you, uh, uh, as is somebody else in this room, I believe. Thank. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. I'm yeah, thank thrilled you. to be returning. It's a really, it's a really fun thing. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a week on a boat with a bunch of entertainers and and uh, fans of those entertainers, and it's a, it's a, it's a blast. Cruises are terrible, but the Joko cruise is great. That's, there we go. <laughs> there we go. The perfect slogan. And where can people find you online? Uh, JonathanColton.com. There you go. And that will have all the subheadings of social media and so forth and so sure. on. Sure. Your, I love that your avatar is still green for Iran on well, Twitter. Well, is Iran free or no? <laughs> there you go. Everyone else gave up. <laughs> Jonathan is still fighting the good fight. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. When we return, we will have secured a location for our improv from Jonathan Colton. And we will meet our improv friends. <laughs> Guys, I can't wait! <laughs> More when Spontaneous Nation returns. Take it away, Ad! <laughs> hey, Dolores. Mitch, we're about to be executed by a firing squad. These may be your last words, so make them count. You know how you were saying you can't afford an expensive, stuffy country club, and so you can't take tennis lessons? Yes, I think it was before we were standing in front of a firing squad, if I recall. Well, let me tell you about PlayYourCourt.com. It's too bad we're both blindfolded because I am rolling my eyes so hard right now. Tell me about PlayYourCourt.com. PlayYourCourt.com is a better way to take tennis lessons. You don't have to join a club or pay crazy fees. They come to you for convenient tennis lessons where and when you want them. Think they can get to South America in less than 15 seconds? PlayYourCourt.com's top-rated pros work with all ages and skill levels, including adult beginners and kids, and they offer a 100% money-back guarantee. If you don't love your lessons, they'll refund you, no questions asked. Well, our imminent executions aside, it does sound pretty good. Visit PlayYourCourt.com slash PFT to choose an instructor near you and receive $10 off your first lesson or lesson package. If you have any questions, call 301-575-6112. And be sure to mention Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins to receive your first lesson discount. Oh, and maybe they could also call the American Embassy for us? Remember, visit PlayYourCourt.com slash PFT and get $10 off. PlayYourCourt.com. Finally, a better way to take tennis lessons. Of all the times to give up smoking, you'll be glad you did once you start taking the tennis lessons. I'll let you have that one, Mitch. Hello, friends. It is I, the contraption air, telling you that this episode of Spontaneous Nation is brought to you by Lisa. Who is Lisa, you ask? An elderly, eccentric millionaire who sponsors podcasts she listens to with her diamond-collared Siamese cat? 
<laughs> no, Lisa is not an old lady name. And anyway, it's spelled differently. Lisa, L-E-E-S-A, makes mattresses, a kind of sleep contraption. Lisa has done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience, the one where you lie on a mattress in a public space, allowing total strangers to see you in your private sacred sleep positioning. For thumb suckers, this is a particular humiliation. Lisa has created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. For reference, imagine a refrigerator has been shrunkified by a shrinkifying contraption. The 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling, supportive comfort. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. This is the only mattress known to mankind that comes with no risks. And Lisa is like the Tom shoes for mattresses. For every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. You know who doesn't do that? The makers of full-size refrigerators and shrinkifying rays. I do hope they'll get theirs come Christmas Eve, ghosts and such. Go to l-e-e-s-a dot com slash p-f-t and enter promo code p-f-t at checkout to get $75 off. Lisa, don't you deserve a better sleep contraption? Guys? <laughs> We're back. Oh. Now, listener, you know that during the commercials, we go to a cold, dark void, right? <laughs> That's a little inside information, but it's scary, and it's nice to be back. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet, <laughs> it's time to meet our little friends. Now, that may seem condescending. <laughs> Seated to my right. And so happy to exist again. She, right, girlfriend. Girl. She's been on the show many times. God willing, she'll be on many more. <laughs> she is the host of the JV Club podcast. Welcome back to the show, Janet Varney. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Janet, are you all right? How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm a little dizzy. Um, <laughs> you're really a little sad. <laughs> you're really seeing this through. <laughs> yeah, I am a yes and person through and through, Paul, <laughs> and I will commit to this until you tell me that it's become tiresome. Has that, it? Not yet. I okay. will let you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to kiss the ground. <laughs> Janet, how have you been since the last time I've seen you? We were just on a big trip together. We had a big trip together. It was yeah. so much fun. Uh, I've been I've been well. I did get a cold when I got back. Sure. I'm glad I got it when I got back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that my trip wasn't ruined. Sure. It was ruined in other ways. It wasn't. Uh, no, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful trip. Um, many of the people sitting in this room were there. It's true. Almost all. <sighs> And, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, otherwise, uh, otherwise great. Good. So you, you're past that cold. I'm you past the, I'm it out. so far past the cold, except for the post-nasal drip that I will avoid making a really gross sound. The PND. Yeah. I, I still heard, have it. I heard a podcast Very old. on not, not this network, but our sister network, Wolf Pop. And one of the hosts, I will not name the podcast nor the person, but this person was clearly under the weather. Yeah. <laughs> And was doing a thing on microphone. Yeah. That was disgusting. <laughs> like, I, like, tear out your uh, earbuds, disgusting. Yeah. I threw my phone in the toilet. <laughs> it's the only thing to do. It's the only thing, thing, to, do. thing to do. Medically, that's the only Otherwise, thing to do. Medically, that's the only thing to do. Otherwise, I would, I would remember it every time I looked at my phone. Yeah, absolutely. Understood. I did the right thing. Well, I'm not going to do that this time. Is that what Spike Lee's movie is about? That's right. <laughs> throwing a phone in the toilet. Yeah, for, I get it. It was 90 minutes of people throwing phones in toilets. Very ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah, there were no Very cell ahead phones. Of his time. People were throwing rotary phones yes. into the toilet. Yes. Oh, <laughs> good, good cinema. Good. Uh, but thank you for asking how good, I am. <laughs> good cinema. Good I cinema will to you. send you a thank you note for asking me sure. how I am. Absolutely. You're going to get so tired of those thank That's you notes. That's how it's done. Never. <laughs> Sitting kitty corner <laughs> across from me. Oh. Meow. Meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman, as well as Janet, one of my colleagues from the Thrilling Adventure Hour podcast, he also hosts, co-hosts his own podcast. Yes. 
Well, it's not your own podcast. It's <laughs> a podcast you must share. A podcast of our own. That's that's right. It's called A Podcast of Our Own. Yeah. <laughs> he co-hosted with uh, our friend Mark Agliardi. It I is do. called We Got This yes. with Mark and Hal. That is correct. Not Hal and Mark. No. Second mm. billing. I'm pointing to myself. Great now, for what, podcasts. And I bet that was I bet that was your idea, Hal. It was. I bet it was. Mark's bet- the shining star. <laughs> And I am I am but waiting to push him down a flight of steps and take his place in entertainment. <laughs> and a flight of steps, sing thee to thy rest. Yes. Now, uh, this this podcast is all about settling uh, the great questions of our time. You settle yes. the great issues of our time. Uh, what was the, <laughs> the the first one was about hot dogs? Yes. Should you put ketchup <laughs> on a hot dog? Should you put ketchup on a hot dog? Yes. And ultimately, the verdict was no. You should never. You do should that. never do that. No. It's weird. Yes. There's plenty of stuff to put ketchup on. Exactly. Hot dogs are mustard foods. Exactly. I say to you, <laughs> hot dogs are mustard foods. <laughs> oh my! <God. laughs> wow. That was what did it. Big ketchup. Wow. Uh, Hal, thank you for being here. Always a pleasure. Thank you for returning to Spontaneous Nation. Of course. I trust you've been well. I have. I've been uh, recording a lot of episodes of my podcast to get ahead. Not as far ahead as we are here. This is for 2017, correct? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm so excited about Star Wars Episode Nine. Every week. like that, I'm probably in it. <laughs> We've inaugurated our new president. Yes. <laughs> um, Hal, sitting next to you, she is making her Spontaneous Nation debut. Yay! She is also our colleague from the Filling Adventure Hour. To the best of my knowledge, she does not have a podcast. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Maybe. Never say never. I'll say it at the end of the thing. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You're teasing an announcement. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to announce something. All right. <laughs> Who knows? I hope you decide Flash not forward. to announce it. It's just a fuck you to everybody. <laughs> Should I announce this? She always no. had the choice. She always had the choice. <laughs> Her name is Annie Savage. Hi. Annie, I'm so excited to finally have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We what got, a wonderful group. We got to do some improv together for the first time in New Zealand. Yeah. And it was wonderful. I had such a lovely time playing with you on stage. Oh, I, I had, thank you. I had such a great time with you guys, too. I was nervous. It was my first time doing stage improv show in a while I find in a while so, yeah. it was so, it was so yeah. shocking you were so so great yeah. thank you guys just a natural just a natural performer you know you just gotta <laughs> let it go you know <laughs> you know you guys connect to the earth let's be best friends connect to the earth <laughs> that's how you get over jet lag connect to the earth what if you put your feet that's what uh, something I saw on Pinterest <laughs> <laughs> on Pinterest <laughs> Oh, I use Pinterest. Is Pinterest giving advice now? Pinterest is all advice. Pic- I thought it was just pictures. It's Pinterest pictures is all with advice. advice. <laughs> Pinterest is the best. We don't need, I don't even Google as much anymore. I just go to Pinterest and look for stuff. <laughs> Interesting. It's the best. Sounds dangerous. Uh, it's the best. <laughs> wait, wait. So what did Pinterest say about Pinterest jet lag? said <laughs> uh, Pinterest said that for jet lag, especially because tr- you're traveling east, which is, was our return trip back to Los Angeles. From, from the our, southern hemisphere. From the southern. Um, <laughs> you're going against the natural, um, you know, sunrise, sunset. Yes. And your rhythm's more off. So one of the good ways, besides getting sunshine in the afternoon time, mm-hmm. um, also just like putting your bare feet on the ground, like the grass and the dirt and stuff like that, like it kind of helps oh. you reconnect to the earth. That's a lovely idea. Maybe Isn't I shouldn't that? have done that. I did not do that either. <laughs> I wish I'd done that. <laughs> I looked yeah. it up and I was like, that's a great idea. Oof. Unison. Here's what I had uh, was a horrible Wednesday through Saturday depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's rough. It I was had bleak. to. Yeah. I yeah. had to get back. I had a baby. You had that baby. Blue she blue just blue got blue. her helmet off. Oh, she had a helmet. <laughs> yeah. And we decorated it. Oh, she's so cute. Tell, please tell everyone how you decorated the helmet. We decorated her helmet with R2-D2 decals. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was so good that it's upsetting that she doesn't need a helmet anymore. I know. It is. I know. We're all we were, about Yeah, it. we were a little bit bummed. Because was <laughs> was, uh, we were going to make it Tron next. Yeah, well, Jana was going to come <laughs> over. <laughs> we were going to do a painting party. <sighs> it really did seem like it was just her thing. Like, yeah, I got my helmet on. A lot of people didn't even, we, we like put a picture on Facebook. This is, she's got her helmet off. And people are like, oh, I thought you just gave her like a signature hat. <laughs> a signature yeah. hat. Uh, yep. Every baby needs one. Right? Every baby needs a signature hat. My new children's book. It's <laughs> coming out in the fall. Should I announce the price of it? Well, later. 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 
All right, assholes. Here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Deserved. We are deserved. Very. <laughs> We are going to tell a story based on a location provided uh, to us by Jonathan Colton. Uh, as we tell this story, this will be one long story over the course of the next next, next two segments. <laughs> this will be one long story over the course of the next two segments. <laughs> We're going to cook up some jambalaya. <laughs> um, periodically throughout the story, to help the storytelling, you will hear the sound effects. If uh, a scene is uh, occurring concurrently, to another scene, if we cut from one place to another in the same uh, time frame, you will hear this sound. That is cut to. Ooh, a little bit of a lag on it. And then and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. That's I don't cut even know to. where we are now. <laughs> We're back to the same. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> if someone is having a memory or if we want to find out more about something that is happening in the scene that occurred in the past, we will hear this flashback sound. When you hear that harp, that means we are flashing back. Maybe I shouldn't talk over it so you can hear it. <laughs> flashback. Classic. <laughs> if we want to return from the flashback to the present day or go into the future, you will hear a flash forward sound represented by the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Try to, here's a mnemonic device. Hey, I'm getting some vibes that we're going into the future. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what sound is this? Harp. What does that mean? The, going to the past. Back. I'm going to harp right. on That's the right. past. <laughs> what did that mean? What did that mean? A bit cut to. That's right. Harp on the past. Side, Very yeah. good. Si yeah. Uh, side. Swipe. Side swipe. Side swipe. swipe. Side swipe. We're going side to side, side in time. Side to side. Yeah. So that's cut to. And then, of course. I'm getting a vibe that we're going to the future. <laughs> yeah, I, now, for the record, I never asked you to repeat the amount of commotion. I just asked you to remember what the sound was. I like being disappointed by things <laughs> out loud. I like being disappointed by things out loud. The Janet Varney story. <laughs> my children's book. All right, guys. My, my children's book. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful with your coffee. No, no, no. I was just sneezing. That's just the sound I make when I sneeze. Some people say, you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> how about we, I, we're, we're, we should be in the story by now, but <laughs> how about our, our dear friend, Jonathan Dinerstein, uh, who is a, a talented musician, mm -hmm. played piano, uh, was the assistant musical director, and played piano for the Thrilling Adventure Hour. Serial sneezer. Oh, so yes. Has to sneeze. Yes. Oh, right. Ten not times in a row. And nine. It's, and it's not just a kerchoo. It is a, ah! It's like one of those sneezes. <laughs> it is. Like, and once you hear the first one, you're like, here we go. Yeah. You just got to sit. You got to sit back and yeah, just yeah, let yeah. it happen. It's like Caesar's murder scene. It's just a series of times. <laughs> 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 Did that happen when we were walking from one plane? Yes, to, we so were. I heard that. Yeah. I might airport. have thought it was a plane landing. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking from our terminal yeah. to the international terminal oh, it together. Yeah, me so much. Yeah, that was him. It's scary. Anyway, what a freak of nature. <laughs> okay, guys. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to Johnny D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it is time to reveal our location from uh, Jonathan Colton. The location Jonathan has provided us is Top Chef season finale <laughs> after party. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay, we wow. take you now. To the Top Chef season finale after party. Well, congratulations, Shirley. Well, uh, well deserved win. Well deserved win. Uh, thank you, Clark. I feel like uh, you seem like a, maybe a little bit of a sore loser in this case. Well, I'll be I'll be honest. I uh, I thought I did a really good job cooking food, and. Um, I guess I let myself believe that I was going to win it. No, that's never going to be enough. It's never going to be enough to just come show up and cook food. You have to put more into it than that. That was the whole point of the show. Well, they should let you know that, I think, during the application process, because I showed up and I said, I'm here to cook food. And uh, they said something about uh, me being charmingly uh, direct and no frills. And I thought, like, okay, I understand this. And... So, um, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. To me, the show is more, is also about, you know, are you interesting? Are you dynamic? And you just kind of, you're very straight ahead. You are just very like, I'm cooking food. I'm not even really, I have no passion behind it. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, 
the end of the day, it's just uh, it's food. You eat it for sustenance, and I don't know what the... I guess I didn't realize it was going to be so food crazy, the show. Well, it was, Clark. I don't know what to say. I mean, I think everyone else here understood that, and everybody else kind of put their best foot forward, you know. That's certainly true of Daniel. He did a great job, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was clear to me, come in, make an impression as a person. That's first, and then uh, what you do in the kitchen comes in second. That's why I would just, you know, that's why I'm the knife thrower. Well, I just throw it in everybody's food. I don't care. Can I say something, though, Daniel? Yeah, and, go ahead. And, uh, and this is, again, I, I guess this makes me a sore loser, but the fact that you wore a cowboy hat indoors uh, I think was rude. I, I'm sorry to be such a manner, f- a manner stickler. You know what? That's fair. Normally I would remove my hat for cooking inside and just inside in general, but it's television. I'm in everybody's exactly. home. Exactly. They got to know I'm from Texas. That's why he covered himself always with a barbecue sauce too. Like, yeah. where were you that you suddenly are covered with barbecue sauce? That's right. Oh, he must have been in Texas it's and charming. stopped there. It's charming. Well, the way that I was raised by my giga and footfoo <laughs> was a gentleman removes his hat in of doors. And so, I don't know. I just think that manners should count for something. I was very polite. I made my grilled cheese sandwiches for every challenge, regardless of what the yeah, ingredients very, were. Very, very consistent. Yes. Yeah. Clark. Oh. It's good to see you. Hello, Hillary. Hello. I just want you to know it was a really hard judging. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it comes down to the food. And the personality that you put in the food. I mean, surely just Sean. Oh, thank you. That's like the, the past test of shine. I know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I know that even as a French Canadian schooling, which is, as everyone knows, horrible. The right. Worst. I the still worst. know. Terrible. Absolutely. Yeah. I worst. still know that, that, that it's Sean. Oh, Hillary, yeah. you're wonderful. Oh, stop it, Shirley. You're wonderful. You're well, you know, bon appetit. As I and say Daniel? about everything. Yeah, bon appetit to you, honey. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Uh, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. I want a I want a bottle of that barbecue sauce. Well, oh. let me get a spatula in my right arm and I'll get one. Why don't you Why don't you just ring out your shirt? <clears throat> well, that's mean. Oh, Clark. I was Clark. trying to have a person. You want me to take my I'm just a piece of meat to you. I just take my shirt off and show off my chiseled physique with nothing but a jeans and a cowboy hat and some Actually, knives I throw. That would be fine with me. <laughs> That's something Well, I... if you want me to do it, I'll do it. I mean, it's fine, but it just seems rude coming from him. Well, the yeah. I mean, Clark, wh- I guess my question for you is, you know, what made you want to become a chef in the first place if you have no passion about it? What's your story that you suddenly decided you needed to become a chef? What's my story about yes. wanting to become a chef? <laughs> Well, I guess if I had to tell it... Just tell it, Kirk! <laughs> I'm hungry. You want some ramen, honey? <sighs> ramen. Mom... You like noodles. But, by the way, can I call you Marjorie? Not yet, honey. Not when, yet. It's when? too soon. You're still just a kid. Um, Marjorie, can I put yourself some ramen? Yes, you can, sweetheart. Here you can. How come Tina gets to call you Marjorie? Well, she's got an old soul. (laughs) We, 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 uh, Marjorie and I used to hang out in heaven. (laughs) You can't prove that. (laughs) I think we did, though. It's just that feeling you get. Yeah. All right. You're more of a new soul. A what? More of a new soul. A new soul. A new soul. I thought you made up a word. <laughs> More of a new soul. <laughs> I didn't know what a new soul was. Well, I'm it's sure a, that's it's a word. similar to an a hole, but it's a new soul. Tina. <laughs> oh, Tina. You're gonna let her say that? <laughs> well, you know, she's her soul's been around for a yeah, while. She can yeah, say whatever yeah. she wants. I'm gonna go read the Bible. All right, honey. Mom, I don't want ramen. Can I? Can I try making my own food? <gasps> it's just out of necessity. Um, wow, that's okay. Uh, do you? Uh, don't hurt yourself. I well, I, I wasn't planning on it. But there's knives, and, <laughs> and there's forks, and there's stoves. Well, why don't I make something that doesn't involve knives or forks? Okay. I guess there's no way around the stove if I want it to be hot. What do we have in the house? Uh, we got some bread over sure. here okay. in the bread box. The staff of life, as it or, says in scripture. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and, uh, well, I got this cheddar cheese. Ooh, from the government? <laughs> government cheese. It's a, <laughs> it's a delicious flavor of cheddar. Well, then, I guess I'll make myself a grilled cheese sandwich? What is that? <laughs> Are you trying to tell us you invented the grilled cheese sandwich at home when you were a kid? Do you have proof that I didn't? Sir, I do not. <laughs> I'm just a man covered in barbecue sauce with a hat and knives. I know not of history. Amen, brother. Amen to that. That's right. <laughs> well, Hillary, I, uh, I I tried my best, and uh, I'm sorry that I didn't have enough personality or abs to uh, come in even second place. The abs were pretty important on my scale of judging. As a uh, food critic, I do have to say, I don't remember when I had my first grilled cheese. So it's possible <laughs> I could have invented them. I'm not saying you didn't, and I'm not saying you did. <laughs> well, what was, the, what was the first grilled cheese that you can remember? If you had to think to yourself, oh, this was a memorable grilled cheese, if there even is such a thing. No offense, Clark. Well. Then taken? <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> mm. That's really good. This is cheese and bread. Everybody get out of the restaurant! It's on fire! Mm. No! Ah, oh, I was about 22. <laughs> That's in, dramatic, huh? In Vegas. You know, the big uh, Caesar's Palace fire. I remember sure, that. Yeah, yeah, no, everyone yeah. was... Everyone remembers. They lost yeah. three centurions that day. They it was did. very oh, sad. Oh, man, yeah. really yeah, sad. Really, yeah. really sad. But that was yeah. my first grilled cheese. So, um, yeah, I think... And I'm 23 now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a year ago. It was a year ago. Well, yeah, that's when the fire was. Well, so. I am 35, mm. and that story that I told involving my mother and the first grilled cheese sandwich that I made, I was seven at the time. So it's possible. Mathematically. And we did grow up in Las Vegas. <laughs> Gosh. So I may have made that grilled cheese. And I also, I probably shouldn't say this, but maybe this gives me a little personality. I may have burned <laughs> Caesar's Palace to the ground. What? Well, I'm not saying I did. I'm not saying I didn't. No, this it, is exciting. Like, if you did, that makes you for sure a more interesting person. Like, really? I would, I would maybe almost cede my winning to you. If yeah. I found out that I you would... had some checkered past where you had burned down someplace. Yeah. We could do a recount. I would take my hat off on television for that. <gasps> How would people know who you are? I don't know. I don't even know who I am. It scares me to think about. <laughs> well, you should uh, make sure your shirt's off, too. Guys, no let me, uh, could you excuse me for just a second? Yes. Yep. What do I do? I didn't invent the grilled cheese sandwich. Certainly didn't burn Caesar's Palace to the ground. <laughs> we were raised in Atlantic City. It's a whole different Caesar's Palace. But these guys, they, they're finally starting to like me. If I buddy up to these contest winners and second placers, <laughs> maybe I could open my own grilled cheese restaurant? No. A grilled cheese sandwich restaurant? That's impossible. Wait. Los Angeles. Of course. <laughs> Silver Lake. <laughs> that area is dumb enough to have a grilled cheese sandwich restaurant. <laughs> Why not me? All right, I'll do it. I'll tell a bunch of lies. Anyway, guys, um, sorry, I just had to step into the coat closet for a second just to uh, <laughs> get my bearings because um, I'm about to confess something to you. Oh, this sounds juicy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I 1,000% started the fire that burned Caesar's Palace to the ground, as well as invented the grilled cheese sandwich. Woohoo! Oh my goodness! Oh, you're the most interesting person I ever met! I know! It's like you were hiding your true identity, so you felt you couldn't let your, your freak flag fly! That's right! That was so hard to say. I kept, <laughs> it, I kept it furled. I kept my freak flag furled. Yeah, wow. like a fruit roll-up. <laughs> exactly like a fruit roll-up. Thank 
you, Shirley. You're welcome. Clark. My flag was like my freak flag was like a fruit roll up. I'm seeing you in a whole new light. It's like a light of flames all around you. Well, listen, uh, Hillary, remind me again. The uh, the first and second place contestants. Uh, what is included in their prize package? Well, they get to open up their own shop of whatever food. Shop? food. Well, food shop or store, grocers, even if they wanted to. <laughs> they get to open their own supermarket. It's, it's I'm up tired to you. of cooking. Let someone else do it. I'll just sell them the stuff. That's right. I like watching them run around like we did to try and get ingredients. That's my favorite right. part. That's my favorite. <laughs> Little we, rat. This is a revenge show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they can uh, anywhere in the continental United States. And the person who comes in third, let's say, even though there was no third place. Right. I, I mean, let's say the first placers and second placers, they got to nominate someone as third place. Oh, they can absolutely do that. Oh, they can do that. They can. Okay. That's part of the uh, their package. So then- They would have to give up. One of their shops, though. So yeah, and I, we, so we, between the two of us, we each get one shop each. We would have to give one of those shops up. That's right, Shirley, Daniel. <sighs> this is tough. That's real difficult. But for I, me. I, I, I have to say, right now, I don't feel I have a reason to donate that anyway. I mean, I feel still like I'm not totally convinced. Yeah, me neither. The uh, jury is out, sir. Of you're not totally convinced of the things that I am claiming, which are true. I guess I'm still having a little bit of trouble with it. I do see you in this new light where you're very flamey, but I feel I need more. I just need to see more fire in your eyes, in your eyes. It's the passion. It's why you didn't win, remember? Oh, not, oh, so not literal fire in my eyes. No, don't set your eyes on fire. <laughs> hey, could you guys excuse me one more second? Sure. I know what I got to do. I gotta set this place on fire. <laughs> then they'll see. Then they'll all see. Uh oh. What, what? What is going to happen? What? This guy's gonna set this place on fire? <laughs> oh dear. We will find out what is to become of our top chef, Chef Testant, when spot at their rap party. <laughs> the after party. When Spontaneous Nation returns! This week's Spontaneous Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello, I am a noted psychiatrist and gourmand in the Baltimore area. I prefer to withhold my name, because if everything is knowable, life holds no mystery, and without mystery, the world becomes a dull and tiresome place. But it is no mystery that whether it's for a business, a portfolio, a restaurant, or whatever else, in this day and age you probably need a website. Building a website can be tough, and even if you do know your way around coding, creating something that looks good and works well is a time-consuming affair. I had hired someone to create a website for a cookbook I was planning. He was too slow in delivering the project, and I ended up murdering and eating him, in a manner of speaking. Squarespace makes it easy to build beautiful websites without breaking a sweat. Squarespace provides simple, powerful, and beautiful websites that look professionally designed, regardless of skill level, no coding required. So you can make your own website, and you won't have to cook a human being as a retaliation for perceived rudeness, as the old expression goes. Not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website, Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology powering your site to ensure security and stability. You know you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs, since millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them too. Squarespace gives you 24-7 online support and a beautiful website for only $8 a month. You can even get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. A year is a long time. Just ask the FBI trainee I have imprisoned under my floorboards, if you know what I mean. Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code PFT to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Eat the rude. Just kidding. You know, Hillary. Oh, oh, sorry, Shirley. No, I was just going to say for someone who came out of a meat locker this time, you didn't go into the coat closet. You have a, your face is very red. You have, you do have a little bit of that fire in your eyes, and you're coming from a very cold place. So I'm. Yeah, I don't, well, there's. I don't know. There's more to me than meets the eye. 
than um, meat in the eye. Right? Get it? Because you're, you're, very, <laughs> you're very funny. You're very, that, you're, man, there's yeah. so much I'm seeing in you now that I did not see on the show. You could have picked more fights with people. You could have made out with more people. Yeah, you could that, have stormed off with more people. Wait, I could have made or out. Or even just by yourself. Oh, yeah. I didn't know we could make it out mean, with each other. You don't, yeah. you it don't means more screen us. time. Yeah. Oh. You get Daniel and I made out for one must have been an entire episode. That yep. was we my was favorite like in the episode. Back. Yeah, oh, I didn't. And we were both making a dish behind each other's backs. Yeah. It was a challenge. Oh, I never imagined they were filming that. Oh, oh. oh, they they definitely were. I wouldn't have kissed him otherwise. Yeah, me neither. All right. I, man, I wish I'd really investigated this game before I joined it. Um, okay, well, uh, you guys enjoy the party, and uh, I'm just going to go uh, outside for just a second. What, uh, why are you holding that gas, that grill lighter fluid? For l- yeah. good luck. Oh, hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. That's that your was... personal item that you brought from home? Yeah, this was... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. We were all allowed one personal item. For yeah. you was your hat, which <laughs> yep. happened to have barbecue sauce inside, That's infused right. that you were able to put on. Yep. Or me, it was my fleur de lis, which is just something <laughs> I wear loud and proud, <laughs> you know, made out of peacock sure feathers That's that right. I would put. Let you your know, French on my flag sh- fly. On my le- Whoa. Oh, what? <laughs> And of course, my personal item was this gas can given to me by my mother's father, Cree Crag. <laughs> now, Clark. Yes, Cree Crag? Come close and hold my hand. I, I, I'm already holding your hand, Cree Crag. Oh, you are. I must be close to the sweet hereafter. Death. Yep. Heaven. The kingdom of Jesus, where we're all meet one day. But all of us? Some of us. You know which ones aren't going to make it. Oh, you no, can... not this again. I told you once, I told you a hundred times. Hey, Craig, please. Those Micronesians are no good. I... And if you see them, you head the other way. My sweet grandson, don't let them taint you with their Micronesian genes. Okay, I, th- I think I'll be okay. Before I go... <laughs> I want you to have something. <laughs> what is it, Cree Crag? It was given to me by my sweet Ting Tong. Who? That's what I called for Cree Grandpa. You mean Chum? Yeah. That's what you call him. Yeah. Yeah. Ting Tong. Chum. Ting Tong Chum. <laughs> oh, you sound like a Micronesian. <laughs> God, oh, damn it. I'm going to end myself. Get me my knife, son. No, no. Cree Crag. <laughs> Cree Crag, please. What were you going to give me? I want you to have this. Can of lighter fluid. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, like a watch or something. I'm gonna be buried with that. How about it's a how very about, nice watch? What about what about the lighter? <laughs> oh, every man must find his own lighter, grandson. Oof, boy, oh boy. You sound like a real Micronesian right now, <laughs> using a gift. He was very specifically racist. <laughs> He was. Yeah. It was weird because he was in a mixed marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what happens. The thing you love about someone becomes the thing you hate after a long time. I guess so. Mm-hmm. It really, happens all the time. You really attract. hate those Micronesians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. You guys uh, enjoy the party, and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, what, you know, he's turned that around. He was a sore loser. Yeah. I know. I almost wish the cameras were turned on because this really doesn't help anyone. You no, know, that point. would have been it's quality Not television. even really a show anymore. Yeah. It's Fantastic. just a bunch of people talking. <laughs> it's like he finally became a person instead of just a grilled cheese factory with legs. Exactly. Oh. Although when you say it like that, that's exciting, a grilled cheese factory. I would factory. like, that's like to the watch Transformers, that Like a man who transforms into a grilled cheese factory. Well, that's Could not what imagine? Transformers is about. I that's know what it is about, but space. remember Willy Wonka and the Grilled Cheese Factory? When he opened, he bites into the grilled cheese, yeah, that, and there's yeah. a golden ticket inside the grilled cheese. Yep. Mm-hmm. He takes it, he goes and I'm pretty sees sure that's there. right. Run Whoa. home as fast as you can and don't stop till you get there. Yes, Hello. yes I, I love it. Hello, everyone. Hello, Shirley. Congratulations on your win. Hello, Daniel. So, so good to see you again. You did a great job. Hillary. Um, mwah, mwah. Um, now, what fun it was to judge this competition with you over yes, the past Marco. season of Top Chef. You were... 
such an inspiration for the judging. Well, no. these you, these contest these chef testants were an inspiration to me. Marco, you are. I mean, I, listen. But I don't know. I didn't want to kiss too much behind when we were shooting because I didn't want it to seem like I was, you know, that brown noser. But you are the reason that I became a chef at all. Oh, I used to watch please. your show when I was a kid all the time. I would watch it. Please, please. That takes me back to when I had that show. I was the first person to have a television program that involved molecular gastronomy. <sighs> Welcome to Science Food. It's me, your host, Marco. And right now, what we're going to do is uh, make bacon and eggs, but it's going to be like a steam. (laughs) (laughs) I thought about that steam every night while I went to sleep. I was like, how did he do it? What? It almost made me interested in science. But no, I still wanted to be a chef because science is still a little bit bullshit. Into science, of course, uh, you know, back then, I never would have thought that I'd end up being a... a, a, (laughs) A religious chef who <laughs> uses religion to cook all my food, but uh, yeah. but here we are. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's uh, still delicious. Has anyone seen Clark? Because I wanted to tell him what a disappointment he was. <laughs> you know, he's. I don't listen. The he actually kind of came alive a little bit at this party, and I don't really? know yeah. how that happened, Ooh. but he did. He said that he had to go somewhere, and he was going to come back. I don't know. I thought he was a terrible drip. I, I'm surprised to hear that he came to life in any way. I think it well, took, he's no you. You know what I mean. He's not as exciting and dynamic one, as you are. There's, there's only, only one Mark. one Marco. Super, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's super That's religious, insane. formerly pagan chef. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Delicious. Well, we, we found out that Clark invented the grilled cheese sandwich yeah. and he set the fire at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. Can you believe that? that? that what? I like this guy. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I wish he'd revealed that during the the chef test. Or made out with somebody. You sit down for a second, you sound out of breath. I'm, uh, well, look, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got all kinds of emphysema going on. But also, I think the spirit of the Lord is just heavy in some people. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe too heavy. I'm a Christian scientist, so I should be seeking some sort of treatment for this, but I am not. <laughs> just kind of been praying every day yeah, and hoping that... that's what that, the uh, reading rooms are for, I think. Yeah, They're I've been like reading all about op- emphysema. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like an operating room for it's, readers. Yeah, it's not good, it turns out. <laughs> every, I keep reading stuff thinking like, maybe this one will say emphysema is great. No. Well, the good news is we're not doing any more cooking and there's no reason for there to be smoke anywhere, so your emphysema should be fine. You yep. should not be in any danger at all. Surely, Nothing I, could possibly go wrong can, to make your emphysema worse. Can I ask you a question in English? Why, why is there... So much smoke around, doesn't it? Seems like there's a lot of smoke around. No, I think that's still just a fog machine from when we all the announced from the winner and the confetti <coughs> with the. Fog. I don't know. I don't oh, know if this it's is fog. warm. Okay, that is uh, really going up very quickly. That um, wow, first big fire I've ever set, and I feel like uh oh, oh, people are already burning alive. Well, I kind of hoped people would run out of the building. <laughs> Everyone's just staying in there. I don't know what to do in an emergency. Should, should we get out of here? <laughs> my my fleur de lis caught fire so fast. Oh, it's no. feathers. Oh, feathers. No. <laughs> Hillary, please dra- get my upper body and drag me out of here. <laughs> you owe it to me. It's a fellow judge. I do. It's in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> You're so heavy. Daniel, fan away some of the smoke with your signature cowboy hat. <laughs> you think you would expect me to take this hat off? Hold on a second. Oh no, the barbecue sauce has stuck it out. Oh, no. Where are the cameras? Where are the cameras? Wow, that is, uh, that's a big fire. No one's come outside yet. I'm a little, little concerned. A little concerned that everyone still seems to be inside. What are we doing? What are we doing? Get low, just get low to the ground. Just stay where you are. I think my fingers are melting together. (laughs) That's gross. Guys, get away from that open doorway. That's probably where the fire's coming from. Shouldn't we go through the open door? No, it's a bait draft. Hold on, everyone. Where's Clark? Somebody has to find Clark and save him. (coughs) Oh, boy. Um... (laughs) I really, just like, just like the contest itself, I really did not think this through. Guess I should have investigated cause and effect of fires. Um, did not mean to become an accidental murderer, but I seem to have. Maybe I'll just sort of quietly tiptoe on out of here. Oh! Hold on a second. Hold on a, is that a what is that a fire extinguisher? Can someone grab that? 
Uh, I got it. All right, Daniel. Maybe train that on the flames. Is that how it works? Okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> now what? It's working. Keep doing it. All it's right. working. You're All saving right. our lives. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh God! That foam of the that foam of the fire extinguisher reminds me of that wonderful salmon mousse foam that you did on the show oh, about twenty remember? years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I made this beautiful salmon mousse that just looked oh. like a puddle of spit. <laughs> it was genius. It's making me hungry. <laughs> oh, I'm getting. The, you know what, Hillary? I'm a little hungry myself. <laughs> Oh, it's true. The smell of my molten flesh mixed with the barbecue sauce on your hat is really working up an appetite now. Huh? Yeah. Guys, we almost died in a fire. All of us. Everybody in this room. <laughs> Everyone. The can't believe. So many people here. This is the kind of thing that makes you <coughs> and makes you really appreciate what you have and makes you rethink your future. Like, I'm starting to think maybe instead of opening a grocery store, I might open, like, a smokehouse. <laughs> like, just a house full of smoke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with, like, some hanging meat inside. Oh, I see what you mean. Sure. Yeah. Hey, hey, That's how they do but it. I, I feel as if we've uh, we've overcome a great uh, uh, scary thing. I feel like there's a word for that. <laughs> I can't. Catastrophe? A ballyhoo? Oh, catastrophe. A ball- that sounds good. <laughs> you think no, of those No, what we called my grandma. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. I say, my friends, we, may we promise to each other that we'll, first of all, of course, we'll get uh, identical tattoos to commemorate oh, this absolutely. night. Oh, absolutely. But absolutely, then also, yeah. just like the Lord of the Rings guys. Oh, hey, you know what? Let's get that same tattoo. <laughs> okay. Let's just get that tattoo they got. All right, then. And then let's meet... Let's meet uh, uh, every year at a different restaurant, and we'll uh, in- instead of cooking for once, we'll all just enjoy a good meal, and we'll thank uh, the heavens above that we're alive. Well, I don't feel right getting any kind of tattoo or promising anything without a newfound friend, Clark. I, yes. I'm Clark. so afraid he perished in the fire. <coughs> ah, fuck that guy. Listen. <laughs> Let's let's meet. Let's all meet up again one year from today at a at a wonderful restaurant. What do you say? Okay, I'm in. I'll be there. Absolutely. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, my emphysema is not oh. getting any better. I'm Marco, su- you just do not seem like you were that healthy. Yeah, this seems like real close to the end. I'm, I'm surprised you're good. still alive. I'm dragging around four tanks. I noticed, <laughs> yeah. Oh my Sorry gosh. about our divorce, by the way. That oh, that's all right, Hillary. Thank you for marrying me for a time. Very yeah. romantic. You know, so much can happen in a year. You guys got married. I got rid of my accent. Yes, what I happened, know. Shirley? Your charming well, accent. No, well, when I moved to Los Angeles, you know, when I started getting offers to do stuff, someone told me that it was too regional, so I decided to just kind of get rid of it. So. It makes you more charming, being American. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. I feel like, I just feel more interesting you and are. yet more like everyone else. Absolutely. I noticed you were from- Raised your signature fleur de lis. I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> I say, I notice you've replaced your signature fleur de lis. I gotta be honest with you. I did hear and understand what you were saying, but you are just so cute when you seem like you're on death's door. I just I'm wanted to hear it again. I wanted to hear you say fleur de lis again because it reminded me of my roots. Right. Yes, I have replaced it. It's- I've replaced it with this OP sweatshirt. <laughs> I got very into vintage 80s surfer wear when I moved to Los Angeles. Look at those two little bare feet footprints. Yeah. You know, there's only one set of footprints. What? Because God was carrying That's you. Yeah. That's what OP is. Daniel, is that a new cowboy hat I espy on your head? <laughs> yep. This is made out of the skin of some of the people who didn't make it out of the uh, <laughs> a terrible party. Fire? Just to yeah. remember them, it's like a living memorial. But it's not alive, it's just a hat of flesh. Sure, <laughs> a gruesome tribute yep. to fallen comrades. That's right. Oh, and Hillary. Yeah. Uh, we already talked, that's right. Oh, yeah, no, we got married. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm 24 married now, and right. I've been part yeah. of two major culinary fires. You have been criticizing <laughs> food so well this last year. You know, it really took off after that that last incident. You know that my favorite food critique that you gave was <laughs> Dear that, Lord. that Dear Lord. That, that food posium last year in Gstaad. <laughs> what was that thing you said about spaghetti and meatballs? This spaghetti and meatballs 
is the stuff of dreams. Thank you. I worked so hard on it to make the spaghetti and meatballs. And I know my foot fat would be so proud of me and the work I've done. Your what? Sorry, what? My foot fat. My, <laughs> my grumpum. Oh. oh. My umpampa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your grandfather. What? Well, Gr- grandfather. I don't that, understand that word. Are you making up language to make fun of me because no, I'm charming? No, we called my grandfather Chim Cham. Uh, that <laughs> I understand. Yeah, so I, yeah, we're speaking the same language. Yeah. And it's culinarily delicious. Will you marry me? I'm already married to a guy named Marco. <laughs> you mean that, that wrinkled lump of wheezing? It's only going to last another week. Go get him, honey. Hi, honey. <laughs> What a strange speech that was. <laughs> <laughs> you really rolled with that other guy wandering up onto the stage. <laughs> well, friends, I'm glad we're all still alive. Now let's eat. Here comes the waiter. Oh, hello, everyone. May I take your... <gasps> <gasps> what? Clark. So unlucky. <laughs> He ended up a waiter at that restaurant. <laughs> That's what you get for lying. That's the lesson of today's episode, everyone. Don't lie because <laughs> your lies will follow you. That's not what happened here. <laughs> literal people literally followed him by accident, and then they found him. He found them. He, they still don't know that he's at the fire, though. Oh no. well. So there's chance. There's chance he could probably <laughs> slink his way out of there. <laughs> Anyway, that's how the show goes. <laughs> Janet Varney, what do you oh, want to tell people is. about uh, uh, the JV Club podcast? Yes. So wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I'm very, very excited to continue doing it. I'm, it's still summer uh, when this is airing, so we're in the boys of summer. Uh, pocket of the year. I think that's the official term. Pocket I'll of the year? I'll have to check the government. The boys of summer pocket <laughs> of my year in podcasting. <laughs> I think those, those thoughts were too far away from each other <laughs> that it was confusing for me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> pocket of the I'm year. I'm so sorry. Congratulations on that Pocket of the Year award. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's deeper than it looks. That's right. It's deeper than That's it right. looks. That, uh, I, I, I will be on this, uh, this cruise. Uh, on the Jonathan which, Colton cruise. Which, Joko cruise uh, crazy. Jonathan Colton spoke. Um, and and uh, at some point in the fall, uh, You're the Worst Season 2 will be airing, which we're filming now. Which is this a television show, show on the FX network. Mm-hmm. Yes. Correct. There we go. Hell. Yes. What do you want to do? Oh, Janet, where can people find you online? Uh, uh, Twitter at Janet Varney and JanetVarney.com. There we go. Hal, where can people find you online? They can find me at HalLublin.com or at HalLublin on the Twitter. And is there anything you'd like to tell people about? Anything coming up? Guys, if you're out there and you're listening to podcasts like this one, right. which is the finest of podcasts, oh, go check you. out We Got This With Mark and Hal. Do check it out. Uh, Mark and I will both be at Dragon Con Labor Day weekend. So come there. We'll be recording a live episode oh, with a panel cool. of guests. Dragon Con, of course, is a convention where dragons are swindled out of thousands of dollars. <laughs> yes. We're going to grift all those giant scaly <laughs> bastards. But guess what? It's a reverse con because dragons don't exist. Annie. Hi. God damn savage. That's my name. I adore you to pieces. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Where can people find you online? Uh, Twitter at Annie underscore Savage. Why the underscore? Was there already an Annie Somebody Savage? Somebody already took it. I think it was a 14-year-old girl. God damn it. Yeah. Mm. That's all right. But I, I'm still, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> you seem good. You seem I know, good. I'm doing good. You seem good. And now it's August. Yes. So, are you ready to make your announcement? Perhaps <laughs> I feel like if I say it out loud, then we'll actually do it. Yeah, we've been talking about it forever. There but, you go. Okay, so here's uh, hopefully now happening. Hopefully, thank you, Evan. <laughs> perfect <laughs> amount of buildup. My husband and I would like to do a podcast. This We're is Fred a, Cross. Your husband, Fred my Cross. My husband, Fred yeah. Cross, an actor here in Hollywood. Yes. Um, uh, we want to do a podcast uh, tentatively titled at the moment, um, The Baby is Sleeping, <laughs> Great. where we <laughs> basically, it's a little bit about parenting in Hollywood and mm-hmm. acting and auditions and all that stuff and have guests on 
and um, the first part would be us just kind of catching up. <laughs> we finally get the baby down <laughs> because very quiet voices. Yeah, that's exactly. when you do it. That's cool. when you do that's it. Fantastic. That's great. So, so that. um, now that I've said that out loud, yeah, you gotta, I gotta do it. You got some time so to look get it for together it and, and make it happen. Contact me at Annie underscore seven. And it's called the baby is sleeping. The baby is sleeping. So far, that's the tentative title, but I've, I'm pretty, I'm pretty like, I, think I like it a lot. That's a great, great. title. <laughs> great. The fantastic. baby is sleeping. It's great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Annie, thank you so much for being here, and oh, please do come you. back. Yes, That please. goes for everybody. Hmm. All right. Do I get another pin? No. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's off my conversation. <laughs> Eben Schletter, <laughs> ebenschletter.com, Eben Schletter on Twitter. Go find Eben's albums online and buy them. You should do this because Eben Schletter is only the best. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. <laughs> Guys. I forgot to do my plugs. No, you shut up. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Hulu. Uh, as of this recording, we have still not gotten the official pickup for season four. A frustrating situation. <laughs> Spontaneous Nation Live happens Saturday, September 12th. That is going to be a fun show, as the live shows always are. I, d I don't think I've said this uh, in my plugs for the live shows, but the live shows we do... Uh, as opposed to here in the studio where we're sitting around a desk talking to microphones. Live show we do on our feet. It is live. It is happening right in front of you. We're running around like idiots. Uh, there's still the sound effects to confound people. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun right there in front of an audience. Largo at the Coronet. Tickets are on sale at pauleftompkins.com slash live. Rate us wherever iTunes, wherever podcasts are rated. iTunes, Stitcher, whatever. Give us a good review if you're looking for something to say about the show. Let me say this. Uh, you can write this in there word for word in the midst of your own words. Somewhere slip in this phrase. Spontaneous Nation is a podcast for people who know they deserve good things in life. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you to people who have donated to us. If you'd like to donate to the podcast and to Earwolf uh, on our page at Earwolf, you will find a little donate link at the bottom of the page, of the Spontaneous Nation page. Uh, please do go there to the forums, discuss the show if you like. Uh, there is a thread where you can ask me questions about the show, and I'm happy to answer them. Questions about the show, please don't ask me about clothing, which a lot of people like to do. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for telling other people about it. Uh, you are all wonderful and you are all precious in my sight. Keep in mind, I cannot actually see you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye forever. Until <laughs> next week. Semper in presenti. Review is back with an all-new season on Comedy Central. Andy Daly returns as Forrest McNeil, reviewing life even as it kills him. Last season, Forrest's life spiraled out of control. He accidentally killed his father-in-law and brought cocaine to a prom. Can it get any worse for him? Short answer, yes. Review, Thursdays at 10, 9 Central and on the Comedy Central app. What are we doing this for? It's a promo to promote your show. Oh, God. What are you talking about? Why do I still have to do press for this A lot thing? of people don't know about it. Who doesn't know about it? Well. Barack Obama? What are you, too busy leading the free world? Get on board. Just explain what your name is and tell the premise of the show, okay? You're a senior at Marina Del Rey High School. I got areolas as big as dinner plates and Put I use- shirt on. I'm promoting the show. Are you ready to tune in to these, Earwolf? You know this is only audio. What? Right? No one can see you. I thought there was a reality show that's been following me Guys, secretly. Marissa here is a, a young woman with a lot of spirit, and she's the host of a new podcast called Womp It Up. She interviews her fellow teachers and students and people from the Marina Del Rey community. And my partner in crime, Listler DJs, a bunch of songs you don't want to hear and answers your love questions. I got a lot of followers on my Listler Spotify playlist. So yeah, why so don't you check this out? Listen up. You should try out for Cirque du Soleil. I go to the circus often because it's... You feel it. Are home. you kidding me? I love the circus. I love it. We should go. Because I can't go to movies. To so it's one it's one of the yeah, entertainment makes experiences. Sick. Yeah, it makes them seasick. Motion sick, yeah. yeah. Seasick is reserved for people on boats trying to flee. From a past. We tried to go see the new Nicholas Sparks movie. The see best part of me. I threw up right away. Open yeah, the credits. Oh, so right. So listen to Wop It Up at Earwolf.com or your favorite podcast app. Or you could listen to these mamma jammas. Put them away. A flap, flap, flap. Sound, sound effects for your breasts. The sound of my boobs flapping in the wind. Turn around. Earwolf. 
This has been an Earwolf Media production. Executive producers Jeff Ulrich, Scott Ackerman, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolfradio.com <laughs> The Wolf Dead.